everyone, it's Justin again. We've been learning about equations together for a while now, and you've become a pro at solving them with one step, two steps, and even the ones that have variables on both sides. But knowing what you've learned so far, what do you think we could do to solve more complicated equations, like this one right here? You could take a look at this same equation in your guide and notes. Make a prediction about how you think we'll solve this, and I'll meet you back here in a minute to talk about it. Remember, no matter how fancy or complex equations get, the goal is always to isolate the variable so we can see what number it must be equal to. So when we have extra stuff going on here, like distribution and extra terms, what do you think we should do? Well, if all this extra stuff is the problem, then we should simplify it. Each side of this equation is just an expression. So we could take a look at a complicated side like this here and just simplify the expression by distributing and combining any like terms just like this. Once we simplify it, it starts to look way more familiar and easier to solve. In your previous unit on expressions, you got really confident with simplifying, and so far in this unit, you've gotten really confident with solving equations. All we're doing here is taking that peanut butter and that jelly and making ourselves a nice simplifying and solving sandwich. Mm. Let's put it into action and try a few example problems together. Our first example problem says to solve for m. And we have the equation 10m plus 7 minus 2m plus 11 equals negative 6. What do you see here that we can simplify before we start solving? We have several like terms in this equation that we can combine. We have 10m and negative 2m, which both have the same variable. And then we have 7 and 11, which are both constants. Notice that I am not going to touch the negative 6 over on the right side. What do you think that is? Each side of the equation is its own separate expression. Whenever we're simplifying, we can only work with one expression at a time. So I can only look at these four terms on the left. The negative 6 is its own expression. If you want, you can even cover up the other side right now so that you're not tempted to incorporate it. Go ahead and pause here to simplify the left side of the equation by combining like terms. 10m and negative 2m make a total of 8m, and 7 and 11 make a total of 18, making 8m plus 18. Remember, since negative 6 is in another expression on the other side of the equal sign, we're not going to touch it. Now pause one more time to finish this equation off on your own. We can subtract 18 on both sides, and then finish off by dividing both sides by 8 to get a final solution of m equals negative 3. Keep in mind that every step of the way when working with equations, each line is equivalent to the rest. Even though they may look totally different, we are keeping our equation balanced and equal to what we started with. Let's do one more example problem. Our second example says to solve for b, and the equation given is 10b equals 10 minus 2 times the quantity of 8 minus 3b. I want you to go ahead and try this one on your own, so pause here and give it your best shot. We have to simplify the right side of this equation. I'm going to cover up the left side so that I remember it's not part of the expression on the right. First, I need to distribute this negative 2 to the 8 and the negative 3b inside the parentheses. Using a strategy like highlighting can help make sure you don't lose those negatives whenever you're multiplying. Negative 2 times 8 makes negative 16. 
and negative two times negative three B makes a positive six B. I'll bring down everything else we haven't touched yet. Oh, I still have some like terms here. I can combine 10 minus 16 to make negative six. Fully simplified, my equation now looks like 10B equals negative six plus six B. Okay, so I have variables on both sides of this equation and I have to bring them together. I can choose to cancel either of these variable terms, but which one do you think would be the most efficient to cancel? Well, my goal is to get the variable by itself, and since 10b is already on its own side of the equation without any constants, it's gonna be much more efficient to cancel out the 6b instead. Since it's a positive 6b, I'm going to subtract 6b from both sides to cancel it out. 10b minus 6b makes 4b, and 6b minus 6b cancels out, leaving just negative 6 on the right. All that's left now is to divide both sides by 4. Okay, hmm. Negative 6 divided by 4 makes negative 1.5. Is it okay to have a decimal answer? Absolutely. Decimals are numbers too, and there's nothing wrong with them being the solution to an equation. However, if getting a decimal solution makes you nervous, you can always substitute it back into the original equation to double check that it's correct. Then you can be 100% confident that you got the answer. When it comes to complicated equations, consider each side as its own expression first so that you can simplify things as much as possible. Then once you've simplified everything that you can, you can isolate the variable to solve. Make sure that you fill in all of your guided notes for this lesson before moving on to the practice game. Good luck, check your work, and I'll see you next time. Hey.